Ian, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Dan, uh, how many rushing yards does Josh Allen have? I don't understand. I don't know either. I, I have no idea. McLovin has a half hour to figure that out. All right. How do you how do you prepare? Now, I know the Dolphins run this play. They practice this play. I don't know if you were there on Saturday's practice or walkthrough, but did you have any idea what kind of play they had in store here? No, no. The the two things I would say, one, Gronkowski comes on the field, which indicates New England thinks it's going to be a Hail Mary. But the point I made at that juncture was they had seven seconds left. I thought Miami would throw a quick hitter, try to pick up seven, eight yards on the outside, get out of bounds, and then try for a Hail Mary from 60, 62 yards away if Tannehill could heave it. Uh, We've seen this countless times. This is actually fairly rudimentary in the NFL at the end of games. You have these chaotic moments, laterals, flags, bedlam, and it never works out. I've called them who knows how many times in the NFL. As a play-by-play guy, a Hail Mary you can build up to. There's a moment where you know there will be finality. This play I think took everybody by surprise, including the New England Patriots, because they executed it so well. And it was actually fairly fairly crisp for a lateral play to happen that way. So a play-by-play announcer, what do you do? You shift gears, make sure you're accurate, make sure that you are coherent, you're speaking English, and make sure you convey the emotion of the moment. That's the mental checklist that you go through and in the five seconds that you have as the thing develops. The one thing I wondered is, could Tannehill have even thrown it 75 yards? Therefore, why do you have Gronk back there to knock something down? I I, I just didn't understand the strategy with the Patriots. And look, it could have ended that Miami lost the game and, you know, fumbled the ball or whatever. I just, I, I thought they were set up for something that Miami was not capable of doing. Yeah, and that's a fair statement. Uh, That probably plays more into at least my thought of, all right, they're going to throw a quick hitter. Gronk's already on the field. Then they'll try the Hail Mary. That might have been Bill Belichick's thought process at that point. The reality is, look, nobody is above reproach in this league and when it comes to sports, and even with all the equity that Bill has built up, and nobody has built up more equity. There's no one that has more capital than Bill Belichick when it comes to making decisions football related. But looking at it, it seems pretty obvious that Gronk did not belong on the field in that situation. And there is a chance that a safety there, a normal safety could make a tackle on Kenyon Drake where Rob Gronkowski is not normally put in that position. The stumble uh, just added to it and yeah, Bill may have outsmarted himself. That that's that's a very fair statement to make. Do you play things out in your mind as to what if and how how you react? In that situation, not as much. Uh, it it's just a pretty normal setup for end of games where they end with a with a plunk. There's nothing to it. Uh, Truly, uh, having done this now for 21 years with CBS, I've never been in that situation where it's worked, where the last final gasp works. I've called Hail Marys. I had Aaron Rodgers on the radio a couple of years ago with Detroit. And again, there is a natural build in how you approach a call like that. With this, uh, it's it's basically the, the end of a game. If anything, Dan, in that situation, I'm thinking about, Game ends, what are the headlines? New England has won its 10th straight division. That's an NFL record. They will make the playoffs, clinching a berth for the 10th straight year. That's an NFL record. Those are the the thoughts that are swimming around my head. Patriots have had trouble in Miami. It's been a house of horrors for them. So they overcame that. Obviously, you make a quick shift when something like that happens, and and you just hope your instincts kick in. Also, when you have a moment like that, it just feels like the right thing to do is not say anything. So once we know it's a touchdown, you've established it's a touchdown, then you just lay out, take the different camera angles there. 
But how do you let your your color analyst, Dan Fouts, know, I'm not saying anything, we shouldn't say anything? Or is that just a yeah, given? Yeah, well, Dan, yeah, Dan, he, he's been doing this forever. And I don't know if I've worked with anyone that has more of an understanding of the play-by-play color commentator dynamic than Dan Fouts because he's called play-by-play. His dad was a play-by-play guy, longtime play-by-play man in the San Francisco area, and he just gets it. So that's never an issue. He's never one to jump on top of something. He understands laying out, letting it breathe. And even at the end of the call that you just played, I jumped back in. I did believe there was a moment there where we've seen a multitude of shots, and now you need a little more context, uh, stating that the laterals are legal, that this is going to stand, that this was miraculous. Uh, Just those moments of, okay, tie it all together, because I'm sure people watching at home, this is what's dancing around my head, they just want to know, did this count? Is this real? Is this really happening? And the shock on the faces of the players on the field uh, that that told a story in and of itself. But you're talking about in the moment you should have said, hey, that's a legal lateral, or are you talking about once we've already had the celebration and then you backtrack yes. and then clean it up? Yeah, the call you just played, if if it picked up, you would hear all those things that I just detailed. That's okay. that's what was on the air following the the reaction and those great pictures, Bob Fishman, our director, Mark Wolf, our producer, they were all over it. And, and as you stated before, it's not something you can prepare for, uh, just like New England wasn't ready for it. As a TV crew, you're taught to cover the moment, but you're also planning for the game to end. That's part of your off-the-air sequence and Obviously, they had to make a, a very quick change and, and did it with, uh, with incredible ease. We're talking to Ian Eagle, CBS Sports NFL play-by-play voice, had the Patriots-Dolphins. He'll be doing the Dolphins-Vikings coming up next week. And is that the wildest finish you've ever been involved in? Oh, yeah, I, I would have to say uh, just the nature of it. I've been really fortunate to call some incredible finishes yeah, I did the Duke Butler game in 2010 on the World Feed. Uh, I'm I'm huge at Indonesia. Dan. I don't know. If heard. Uh, the '98 NBA Finals. I did Game Six, the Jordan Brian Russell game, World Feed, Ray Allen jumper against San Antonio 2013. Last year, Cincinnati Baltimore. If you remember that game in Week 17. The touchdown uh, Andy Dalton threw that yeah. propelled Buffalo into the playoffs. That, again, was unlikely and a fantastic finish. Uh, those are some of the games that, that pop into my head. NCAA tournament games, uh, Wake Forest, West Virginia, 05. Chris Paul's last game at Wake Forest. Uh, NBA games uh, locally, Nets and Suns with your buddy Mark Jackson, was a double overtime, 161-157 final. Nets Pacers in 02 when Jason Kidd put the team on his back and got the team to the second round in a game five. At the time, it was best three out of five against Indiana. Uh, just a bunch of games that, that pop into my head, but that one that one's going to stand out for a while. Is there a name that you hate as a broadcaster? No, I, I've been I've been fairly okay with pronunciations. When your name is Ian, you better not screw up people's names. Like your your credibility is is going to come under question if you're not getting their name right. Have you ever thought of so, c- c- maybe changing it to to Ian? <laughs> it's not it's not my decision. My yeah. parents made this decision. No, you can you do it. It's, it's yours. It's yours. It doesn't sound as good. Uh, e and Eagle, it's the E and the E. It doesn't jive. I and Eagle sounds much better. Trust me, uh, it would have been easier. Uh, I I went up to uh, Dallas two weeks ago. This is the first time I've gotten this one. I went to check into the hotel, and I said, hey, uh, checking in, last name Eagle, and they start tapping the keyboard, and they said, Ivan? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, let's, let's go with that. Yeah, just, so, you know, a little bit too much emphasis on I. And I know you're a team player, so I think that's... Yeah. Or maybe you're not a team player, Ian. 
No, no, I'm a solo artist. And I think that's becoming painfully <laughs> obvious. No, no, so the pronunciation thing, I remember vividly uh, Chris Fuamatu Ma'afala. I love that name. And thinking to myself, yeah, thinking to myself, all right, I- I've got – I got no shot. I'm going to screw this up at some point. But I I said it so often over and over that that became one of the easiest names for me to say. Other play-by-play guys would say foo, and they'd shorten it. I'm like, no, you have to go for it. You have to, you have to commit. So the foo amatu ma'afala became very much part of my go-to, even if he wasn't in the game. I'd mention he's on the sideline just to show off, <laughs> and I could say it so easily. What about the Greek freak? Oh, yeah. Giannis Atentacumpo, same deal. Yeah. Just it took go. you a little Don't while, though, it. right, Ian? No, 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 no. That was it's Giannis Atentacumpo, Atentacumpo, Atentacumpo. Okay. What about Tua Tonga Bailoa? Manawa Nui. No, no, no. Yeah, Michael Hoa Manawa Nui. <laughs> you just. You have to go. Don't don't hold yourself back. It's got to be unbridled commitment. That that's the way that that I look at this thing. Ian, congratulations on a great call. Dan, <laughs> thanks. Bud. I appreciate it, man. Good luck again <laughs> with the Dolphins and the Vikings. Please tell Dan Fouts we said hello. I will. I will. We'll talk soon. Say hello to everybody there. That's please. not Ian. I need the Eagle. Josh Allen numbers. Yeah, I'm going to give them to you. I'm going to get, I got him. I got him. He, he's not <laughs> Ian Eagle. He's Ian Eagle. Uh, I've gotten that too. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. All right. See you, Dan. That's Ian Eagle. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.